Hey everybody, today we're going to be talking about displays, our window into the digital world. Displays are everywhere in our modern lives, from the large displays in New York, to the small ones on our phone, to simple ones on a calculator, or complex ones like a foldable phone. We use displays everywhere, but how do they work? To understand, let's first explore one of the most common types of displays. LCDs, or liquid crystal displays. You've definitely seen an LCD before, but how closely have you looked? Here's my LCD monitor displaying a search engine. And here's a microscope. Let's point our microscope at our monitor for a closer look. Even closer. This is what our screen looks like under a microscope. Neat. Each of the little colored rectangles is called a subpixel, and a red, green, and blue subpixel, in that order, form one picture element, more commonly referred to as a pixel. The images on my display are made up of these little pixels, so how do they work? Let's explore this by breaking down a pixel's components. Here's a representation of the pixel we were just looking at. We can recognize the three colored subpixels on the front, but there seem to be layers. Let's split it up. Now, let's examine each piece of the pixel. The first part of the pixel is the backlight. This is the source of light for each pixel. The entire display will have a single backlight whose light will be evenly diffused across the pixels on the screen. To be more accurate though, the lines of light travel more like sinusoidal waves. Light waves coming from the backlight are not guaranteed to be going in the same direction or have the same orientation. Like this wave, and this one, and this one. An individual light wave may even be oriented on different planes. That gets messy. This is called unpolarized light. And as you can imagine, it's pretty unpredictable. For our model though, we'll be representing this light from our backlight as just these two little arrows. Displays deal with unpolarized light by using polarizing filters. A polarizing filter only allows light traveling in certain directions and orientations to pass, polarizing the resulting light. You may be familiar with polarizing filters from polarized sunglasses, which use polarizing filters to reduce the amount of light that reflects through them. Here's a photo taken through the sunglasses at a group of windows. And here are the same windows with the polarizing filter rotated, such that a lot of the light reflecting off the windows is blocked. So as light travels from our backlight, it will first come across a horizontal filter, which only allows horizontal light waves to pass, like so. There is another vertical polarizing film further down the line. And if our horizontally polarized light were to travel directly to this film, no light would emit. So how does light travel from our displays to our eyes? The answer lies in our liquid crystal filter. Let's take a closer look. We can see our crystals in the middle there. And wow, they look like a mess. We can get some organization by placing panes of etched glass on either side of the crystals. One with horizontal grooves in the back, and one with vertical grooves in the front. This causes our crystals to align in this helical structure. The long, thin liquid crystals cause light to travel at different speeds along different axes. This property, coupled with our helical structure, rotates the plane of polarization of our light to match the vertical polarizer. This is called the normally white mode, when all the incoming horizontally polarized light rotates to become vertically polarized. But we don't want all of our light to pass all the time, do we? If we pass electricity through our filter, we can cause our crystals to align themselves lengthwise entering what is called the pneumatic crystal phase. Now light will not be rotated, and therefore it won't be aligned to pass the vertical polarizer, meaning no light will come out of the pixel. When no light is rotated, this is called the normally black mode. But by controlling the amount of voltage in our electric field, we can control the amount our crystals align, and therefore the amount of light that gets vertically polarized. We have just showcased the twisted pneumatic effect which is one way LCDs control their pixel intensity. Let's get back to our model. In reality, we actually have three separate crystal filters, one for each of the colored subpixels. Then, by controlling the amount of light that becomes polarized in each liquid crystal filter, we could control the amount of light that gets passed through our color filters. And by changing the amount of light that gets polarized, we can control the brightness of each individual subpixel. Awesome, now we understand the mechanics of each pixel. But how do a separate red, green, and blue subpixel create white? Or any color on this display? 
Remember when we zoomed in on a screen to see the subpixels? These subpixels are actually around 300 microns tall. That's tiny. Because they're so small, our eyes blend them into being a single color. So by changing the intensity of the light passing through each pixel, we can essentially blend the colors, like so. Now we have a decent understanding of the mechanics of our displays. Tune in next time, where we'll discuss how applications can send image data to our displays, and show some other alternatives to the LCD.